It was Indy, baby, and not Indy 1, Indy 2, or Indy 3, but rather it was the big go. The U.S. Nationals, the 66th running of it, and Monday morning racer was there. And this is National Event in Review. Footage, interviews, and even a look at points from the past National Event. All brought to you by strutmasters.com. In Review, U.S. Nationals is next. <laughs> Drag racing fan, here it is after Labor Day in the 66th U.S. Nationals did happen, even though in 2020, with the coronavirus pandemic, we definitely thought it might not. These world's biggest drag race did take place. Over 800, nearly 900 cars on the premises of Lucas Oil Raceway Park for the U.S. Nationals. And for my throttle whack, the big story... It has to be, and not just because he's on a strutmasters.com pro stock motorcycle bike, but because Scotty Kawcheck has been trying for over a decade to win a NHRA national event, and he finally gets it done on the biggest stage, the big go, the U.S. Nationals, and does it while going over 200 miles per hour earlier in the week and even on the winning pass. Let's hear from him on going over 200 on Saturday and seeing the winning run. Monday Morning Racer U.S. Nationals caught up here with Scotty Polachek. Scotty, welcome to the 200 mile per hour club. How awesome is that? You know, Denzo put this thing on a few years ago, and everybody in the class has been trying so hard to get into it. And I'm just excited that we got in there, the fourth ones to get in. You know, the last one to steal that Denzo money. It's, it's an awesome, awesome deal. And thank you to Denzo and everybody for that. Yeah, definitely a cool deal by Denzo. Man, cool that you took the strutmasters.com bike to that milestone. Look, talk to me. This is the first time I've talked to you since we went into the pandemic with you and your wife. So I've got Ask, what's home life been like? What's the tire shop been like? What's been going on? You know, home is crazy busy. The work, uh, working, you know, at Quality Tire is unbelievable. You know, people are just coming in, getting tires, wanting to go traveling, doing, you know, whatever they can in the pandemic. But uh, it's been really busy at work. And, you know, thanks for the crew there doing such a great job. You know, Sue's just kind of keeping me in line, not letting me get in trouble. So we're glad to be out here racing a little bit, though. It's good to be back racing. Methanol's out there racing right now, qualifying up. So, Scotty, what do you think? Hang on, folks. All right, alcohol's down the track. Scotty, what do you think your chances are for a U.S. Nationals Wally this weekend? You know, there wouldn't be anything better than that. Um, you know, we got the bike to do it. The bike's flying right now. It's running good, you know, everywhere down the track. Uh, just got to keep doing our job, doing what we're doing. You know, Matt and Angie are uh, keeping things right. And Michael Ray's working on the bike, doing, you know, everything that needs to be done. He's flawless. So uh, we got everything we need to do. We just need to go out there and make good laps. Well, I know y'all can make good laps. You've been doing that. You've performed well at the other races. Scotty, look, here's to uh, you. Hope I'm hoping you get that Wally. So it's 200 miles per hour and a U.S. Nationals win. Hope it is, man. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, thanks to Chip at Strutmasters and Denzo again. You know, we couldn't do any of this stuff without all them guys. So thank you. All right, folks, Scotty Polchek. I'm the Monday Morning Racer for Strutmasters.com. Scotty, his first ever win. And all the Manson Hines guys are over here on through the side of the racetrack, hoping he can get class leading 57. Andrew's ready. Scotty Polachek will 
take it there. Scotty, congratulations, folks, so that you know, Scotty is a very accomplished rider in Pro Stock Motorcycle. He has had many final rounds appearances, many round wins, has qualified many times for the countdown to the championship, and he's an accomplished rider elsewhere beyond NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle, even holding for 11 years an electric motorcycle record. Scotty, again, congratulations on your win. All right, drag racing fan, on to the rest of the drag news from the 66th running of the U.S. Nationals. And in this, I hope to provide to you some news that you might not have got from the regular NHRA broadcast. Up first, I stopped by the giant killer of the day, Dale Creasy Jr., for an interview. Let's hear it now. Folks, the Monday morning racer here in the pits of the U.S. Nationals got up with Dale Creasy Jr. Dale, man. Giant killer today. What do you think about that round one action? That was good. It was good. We knew we couldn't outrun him if he ran what he was supposed to run, but we kept him honest. And if we do that more often, we'll probably win some more rounds. But that was the quickest run we had ever made. And then second round, we beat that. So we're getting closer. Y'all definitely are. You know, I've been here at every Indy. Y'all have been here at every Indy as far as I can recall. And the performance has been continued to gain and move forward. So where have y'all found it? Is it just been nipping away at it? Or have y'all all of a sudden stumbled on something? No, we've been working out. We got a batch of new clutch discs. And we don't run a lot, so it takes runs to figure out what they're doing. And we're getting almost to the point where we're happy with what it's doing. Never happy, because you always got to go faster. But this weekend was the best weekend we've had in years. Definitely so, and doing it on the biggest stage, the big go, the U.S. Nationals, taking out the number one qualifier, Tommy Johnson Jr. Thank you for shaking up funny car points. I appreciate that <laughs> as a fan and media type. So, what's the plans for this team through the remainder of the season that the NHRA has proposed? Uh, St. Louis will probably be the only one. Anything we have to fly to, we can't go. All right, St. Louis is on the docket for Dale Greasy Jr. for this team. So I've got to ask, and I'm sure other people are wondering, Tech Pack or Tech Pack, what is it exactly? It's a thermal forming company. They thermal form plastics. Uh, they make the shields for phones, just all kinds of machines. So they're expanding. They make molds for other companies, and they've been around for a long time. They've been with us since '95. So they went this a long time, and he was here. He, he talked me into running last night. We weren't going to run because we, we were qualified, and we found the problem. So had we not made that run, today might not have turned out like it was. So I have to thank Tony for that. Hey, thank you, Tony, and thank you, Tech Pack, for supporting the Dale Creasy Jr. team. And uh, thank you, Dale, for running the Lagana Strong items on the car this weekend as well. And we hope to see you at St. Louis. Folks, I'm the Monday Morning, Monday morning Race for Strutmasters.com, Dale Creasy Jr. I think another shocking moment in the day would be Kyle Koretsky, Kid Chaos. He was able to defeat Jeg Coughlin Jr. by Jeggy's own reaction time that it was too quick and he red lit. But then round two, you're expecting a good pro stock drag race and, well, Kyle Koretsky, he red lights. I asked him today over text, man, what happened in round two? He simply said the clutch foot wanted to leave. There you go. Red light for Kid Chaos having some chaos in round two. Let's look at his day real quick. <laughs> Yeah. 
go down, but I'm uh, let it go here. The red team on the left side, all by the right side. That's it, Kyle and Jake Jr. Point five nine four two oh seven for Kyle Goretzky. Two of the new generation in Brooks Box. Goretzky's dad Kenny was known as Captain Chaos. His leader picked up the name Kid Chaos. Now let's turn to some buzz in the top fuel ranks concerning two young drivers. First, Cameron Ferre. He was back for the first time since the Arizona Nationals, but not in his usual Terry Haddock racing ride. Rather, he was in the cockpit of the Leverage Racing top fuel team, helping them out, allowing Joe Morrison to keep his Rookie of the Year status for next year. But the Leverage team wanted to go racing. Cameron steps in and gets a stop on that loud pedal once again. Let's hear from Cameron before race day after qualifying. Monday morning racer here in the Nitro Pits at the U.S. Nationals and caught up with, well, guess who? Cameron Ferre. Cameron, good to see you back out. It's been since Phoenix. How did all this work out with the Leverage team? Yeah, it actually worked out well. I was uh, actually testing my boat for uh, for the summer. We did some maintenance to it. I was pull putting it in the water, and uh, Matt, the car chief, gave me a holler and said, hey, are you interested in filling in for Joe Morris and the, the normal driver for the car? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime I can get the chance to step on the gas of a nitro car, it's, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to do it, and, you know, it's what I love to do, so I'll do anything I can to do it. Well, look, man, we're glad to see you back out and in a top fueler. Uh, interesting Q1 yesterday, no run in fact. What happened? Yeah, unfortunately we did the burnout. Everything seemed to be okay on the burnout, but uh, it actually broke an oil line. So the actual oil line itself split. So just a parts malfunction and uh, luckily it did it when it did. You know, sorry to the fans that it uh, oiled the track so bad and you know, they had to wait, but um, you know, luckily it did it on the burnout, not all the way down the track. So um, there was a blessing in disguise there, but we were able to uh, dial it in for Q2 though. Right, those things happen. Hey, at least NHRA Safety Safari and that track crew is as competent as they are. They got that track back ready to go Absolutely. in no time. Now, Cameron, look, went out there, blasted off to a good pass, a 401 over 300 miles per hour in Q2, and you're standing around 14th. Yep. How do you feel about the chances of making the show? Uh, I mean, pretty confident. I mean, there's obviously some cars that, uh, you know, can run better than a 401. So it's going to, I'll be standing up on the starting line with my fingers crossed, hoping that we'll be able to get into the show for the 60th, 66th running of the U.S. Nationals. So it uh, would be really cool. I've, I've been to the finals here in an alcohol dragster, so I, I know what it tastes and feels like to get so close, and but yet so far. So, um, you know, best of luck to all the other teams trying to get in the show, and hopefully we can hold off and... Uh, Make it happen, you know. I, I'd love to love to race on Sunday once more. Yes, sir. So during this pandemic, what's the fam been up to? What has Cameron been up to? Uh, a lot, to be honest. Uh, just uh, doing the work thing. I, I teach college at Cerritos and Compton College in California. So I've been uh, doing the transitioning to online and hybrid teaching. So that's been interesting. Took a little bit of a vacation from uh, the racetrack, which has been nice. My uh, my toddler, he's two now. So we've been doing a lot of bicycles and stuff like that with him. He's He's taken a liking to that and just kind of hanging out, bought a new house, and uh, my my wife and I are expecting a new daughter uh, in February, so that's pretty exciting in our world. So yeah, lots happening uh, off the track, but uh, everything's awesome and everybody's healthy and happy and you know, we're, we're ready to get back out here full time. It's just uh, obviously we're working on the funding to do it. It's very expensive to run these cars and you know, that, that's the biggest thing is, is finding the funding and the partners that uh, make that happen. So we're not gonna give up until that happens. Yes, sir. That's great news to hear that things on the home front are good. Glad things are going decent, at least here at the U.S. Nationals. Folks, Cameron Ferre, I'm the Monday Morning Racer for Strutmasters.com. Thanks, guys. Take care. 
I know that the Leverage team is excited that they finally surpassed that barrier of 300 miles per hour, a good representative run at a 401, but nonetheless, they were bumped by the last three second car at a 399, making the 16 car field for the U.S. Nationals, and that was the rookie driver, Joey Haas. The notable nostalgia racer earned his license, oh, maybe two weeks ago, and here he is debuting at the U.S. Nationals and he makes the show. Let's hear from Joey. Inside the Terry Totten Motorsports trailer, caught up with Joey Haas. Joey, man, I know you were excited to get your debut out of the way and run a top fueler, and you did it here at the U.S. Nationals. You made the show, and you did it in style, man. Talk to us about that high pressure last qualifier. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about pressure, that's the ultimate pressure. It's just we were the last car that could get in. Everybody else that could get in, was in and we were outside looking in the very last session sun was going down the debut at indy i mean the pressure was there and terry gave me a car we stuck it in the field 399 and and made it a three second u.s nationals field and uh raced on sunday definitely raced on sunday qualified this terry totten motorsports machine and every indy that y'all been at whether you've been a crew man or behind the wheel y'all made the show what an accomplishment for this team so overall the indie trips what's your estimation of it in this team and anything in the future uh, i mean i i think everything's possible uh terry's just stepped up the performance on the car we're gonna work on getting our parts ready to go and uh the, the, i mean the future is kind of ours to you know we got we got a 390 car we know we probably got a 380 car if we can afford the parts uh so We'll service everything, do what we can, and you know, try to get to the next one that works for us, works for our crew. You know, our crew is 100% volunteer. I mean, they got to work around their schedules, and they come out here to have fun. And these last three days of work we've done is the hardest work. Yeah, I don't know what day job can make it worse, but it's uh, these guys bust their butts on it, and it wasn't for the lack of effort, and it was just a uh, awesome weekend. Awesome weekend, yeah. Come out to work on a nitro crew to have fun. It doesn't seem to make sense, but nonetheless, it's fun. So look. You are out after round one. Talk to me about E1 and that run and just your feelings, your thoughts, man, going into the actual U.S. Nationals. Well, I mean, Sean Langdon's one of the best guys there is out there. I mean, it, if he ain't racing the fuel car, he's racing the bracket car, and the guy's just, he's good. I mean, it's just what he does. He's a, he's a machine. And so I went up there. I mean, I knew he'd have me on the tree regardless, just being fresh in the car. So I sunk it in a little deeper and uh, did what I could on the tree. and. You know, he, he obviously come around me, left before me. I mean, he's going to, but he was out there. We were, you know, neck and neck for a little ways and broken uh, push rod, just pushed the push rod out about six or 700 feet, so I stepped off of it. And, he, you know, I mean, Sean, Sean had us beat, but we was there to keep him honest. Certainly, y'all did that. Folks, look, Joey Haas for Totten Motorsports. I'm the Monday Morning Race for Strutmasters.com. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Last but not least, and sticking with Top Fuel in this new segment, well, who doesn't love a pedal fest? We're going to take a look at that right now. At Indy, Justin Ashley, Sean Langdon, pedal fest, and afterwards we'll hear from Justin on that moment for him, his day, and the upcoming Gator Nationals. Nationals, the big go caught up with Justin Ashley. Justin, you're the most recent winner, the Summer Nationals. You had a good U.S. Nationals, though. You were involved in what will be known for a while as an epic pedal fest. What was it like against Sean Langdon? Yeah, that was my first experience going through any kind of pedal fest like that in the top fuel category. And to be quite honest with you, it was fun. Uh, it's not ideal. Obviously, you don't want to be in that situation, but um, 
listen, that's part of drag racing. When you race long enough, especially in categories like this, things like that are gonna happen. And really just top to bottom, when you look at the weekend as a whole, our whole team, Davis Motorsports team, and everybody on the strummasters.com drag did a really awesome job. Right, so your team performed admirably getting that final round, working late through the night, and going rounds today, getting into the semifinals. Look, man, the points are looking better and better for you. What do you think about it? Yeah, you know, coming into the season, the points weren't something that we were necessarily looking at, and I think right now our approach is this. We're just gonna take it race by race. One qualifying session at a time, we're gonna take it one round at a time and see where it goes from there, but I think more so than anything else, we are actually keeping a small eye on the points. Uh, being that there's going to be a limited number of events this year. And we want to do everything that we can to move up in the points and put out a good product for our sponsors. Well, man, look, Gator Nationals will be next down there in Gainesville, Florida. You've got some history with the Gators of performing very well. How excited are you to be going back? Yeah, I'm excited. In 2017, I was fortunate enough to win uh, in Top Alcohol Dragster. My first national event ever at the Gator Nationals was surrounded by a lot of really great people. So. That has a really special place in my heart, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, anytime I get to sit behind the wheel, uh, I gotta say, it beats a day in the office, that's for sure. So, looking forward to getting back out there with our awesome team, this awesome Strutmasters.com Top Fuel Dragster, and we're gonna continue to do everything we can to put our best foot forward against what's the best competition in the world. Folks, Monday morning race, we're at the U.S. Nationals for Strutmasters.com. That's Justin Ashley pedaling and pedaling fest, burning nitro and going rounds. Thank you. Class in session. Let's take a look at the classes that were competing at the 66th U.S. Nationals. Top Fuel, Funny Car, Pro Stock, Pro Stock Motorcycle, and Pro Mod. And yes, I know there were many more with over 800 cars on the premises, but I can't cover them all. <laughs> Sean Langdon wins the U.S. Nationals as you just saw his drag strip to victory there at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. Team Coletta wins last year with Doug. Team Coletta wins this year with Sean. And Doug will step away from the U.S. Nationals, still leading the points, but definitely his point margin, the lead, has been cut in two. Leah Pruitt with a stellar U.S. Nationals and great performance throughout the year now sits second in points, only 50 points behind, and Steve Torrance is 60 points behind first. 
in third. Notice Justin Ashley, the rookie, is fourth, and rounding out the top five is Billy Torrance in top fuel points. <laughs> In Funny Car, Jack Beckman wins the U.S. Nationals for Don Schumacher Racing, the Chandlers, which their partnership will end at the end of the year, and certainly himself, with already rumors that he may very well not be racing in a Funny Car at all next year in 2021. Let's take a look at his drag strip to victory. <laughs> With Tommy Johnson Jr. going out in round one, falling to Dale Creasy Jr., as we mentioned earlier, and with the bonus points of Indy, it definitely tightens up the race between the teammates of Don Schumacher Racing. The top three, Jack Leeds coming out of the U.S. Nationals with the win. Matt Hagen is 35 points behind Jack, and Tommy Johnson Jr. is now third, 57 points behind. Notably, J.R. Todd with a final round appearance at the U.S. Nationals and that team continuing to nip away round after round and perform better. He now sits fourth in points and I am honestly surprised by that. At the end of the Arizona Nationals, I thought, frankly, his year would be done and he wouldn't be able to scratch and claw his way back. But here they are and with a few races remaining, You'd never know what J.R. Todd and that Coletta gang might get done.
Vostok in its 50th year as a class at the 66th U.S. Nationals. Well, first off, the defending race winner doesn't even go past the first round. And our final pair of Vostokers. Matt Hartford. Oh, wait. Alex Laughlin later posted on social media that an electrical issue decided to show up at the worst seven seconds that it could show up at during the staging process. And he was timed out, disqualified, and Bo Butner shoots on and goes to the second round. The winner of the 66th U.S. Nationals in Pro Stock, though, is Erica Enders. Last year she was runner-up, but this year she gets that U.S. Nationals Wally. Here is how she got to Victor Lane. He ended up number 11. That means you draw Erica in round number one. Two red lights in the first round. With Jegs going out in the first round, Line making it to the semifinals, and Erica winning, it surely looks like now a three-way battle for this championship. Erica is first, Jeggy is seven points behind in second, and Line is only 11 behind in third. And then the gap grows considerably to the fourth place individual, Matt Harford being 162 points behind. In Pro Stock Motorcycle, as mentioned earlier in the Throttle Wax story, Scotty Polachek wins the U.S. Nationals, but he also steps away from Indianapolis with the points lead. Look, from first to sixth, there are only 47 points separating those positions. And the top five is all within, in essence, a round and a half We've got a tight points battle for sure in Pro Stock Motorcycle. It's a class that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on. I think it's going to be producing some of the best stories in Mellow Yellow drag racing in the NHRA that we are going to get this year. Well, Pro Mod, as always, was rather interesting at the U.S. Nationals. Two wrecks in round one, nearly back to back. And here they are from the Monday Morning Racer perspective. Wait on 
for Totoro and Matuzic. Another one. Car sliding to a stop. Tough for both. Glad they're both all right. Steve Matuzic. He had just debuted that brand new red Mustang Pro Mod and in round one destroys it. From what I understand though, they do plan on being back at the Gator Nationals. As of yet, I have not heard whether Chris Thorne is going to make the Gator Nationals, but he's connected with ProLine. They may very well have another bullet for him to roll out and be able to continue to further a decent year already up to the point of this wreck. You got to remember he came into the U.S. Nationals as the points leader. He does in fact get one round win. He did win that round that he wrecked in the shutdown area. And as of now, leaving the U.S. Nationals, it's Stevie Fast Jackson with the points lead and the win. That's why people are I'm sorry I don't have footage of the final round. Look, when the boss tells you to get on the plane, you get on the plane. But he did win over Todd Tuttero in the final round. It is a tight points battle in Pro Mod right now. Stevie Fast Jackson leads only by three points, and fifth place is only 43 points behind. I'm looking forward as well to continue to keep an eye on a great classification of race car in drag racing, pro modified in the NHRA. Drag Racing fan, thank you for watching this Monday Morning Racer national event in review on the 66th running of the U.S. Nationals. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that I was able to provide you with a few stories that you did not hear in the regular NHRA broadcast and that I've brought you up to speed on points. Look forward to other national event in reviews from myself. Also, be sure to join me on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. There is a live drag racing talk show that I host that is called Between the Slicks. And we have drag racing individuals from all over the NHRA, PDRA, ADRL, SEGA, Southeast Gasters Association. It's a drag racing talk show. Never know who I might have on to talk drag racing on and off the track. Folks, again, thank you for watching. Please give the video a like, subscribe to the Monday Morning Racer, and until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.